So he's going to explain and prove to you that you, whoever you are, in whatever matzav you are in, hopefully you're a big tzaddik, but even if not, you can use the power of amuna and bitachon to do miracles. You can do open miracles. We have to go back, he says. Where does the concept of bitachon come from? We've been saying for the last whole shir that we have to have security in Hashem. Hashem chesed Have security in God and He will help you. Where in the Torah do you see the concept that you can have security in Hashem? Fair question. So here's what he says. The Torah tells us that there's a story. After Yitzhak Mitzrayim, Hashem introduced us, introduced Himself to the world. Until then, from Bereshis, Noach, Lechelcha, Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, He never went ahead and introduced Himself as the creator of the master of the world. All of a sudden, he said three words. He went, testing, one, two, right? The New York State Lotto. Now, he said, Anoichi Hashem Elikecha. Asher Tzitzichu Mi'aris Mitzrayim. And the Rambam says that this is considered the first mitzvah. What's the mitzvah? Hard to understand. A mitzvah of Anoichi Hashem Elikecha. But Bitochein, it doesn't say in the, anywhere in Bitochein. What does Anoichi Hashem Elikecha mean? I am Hashem, Yud Kei Vav Kei, which comes from the word Mahava. Mahava means to create. I created the world. So now we know we have a Muna to believe that Hashem created the world. That's a, we have a mitzvah to believe that Hashem created the world. That's why the Rambam counts it as the first mitzvah. To believe that Hashem created the world, fine. Anachi Hashem Alekecha. But where's the Makar that I should be able to have Bitachin Sheyazer Loi, that He'll help you? Right? Amunaz Hashem has the power. Bitochen, he's going to use the power. Where do you see that a Yid can rely on Hashem, that he's going to have, he's going to use his power to save you? Beautiful. He says, you know why? Because Anoichi Hashem Alikecha is not one message, it's two separate messages. Anoichi Hashem, I created the world. That is Amunah Hashem, that is Bayre Umanag Lechol Habruim, Vuhulavade Osava Oisaviyasa Lechol Amaisim. The words of Nechi Hashem pertain to us and to the Goyim and to the cows and to the trees and to the fish and to the sky and to the grass. Everything. I created everything. Anoichi Hashem. I'm the one. I did it. But there's another word. Eloikecha. That's already a direct, sent, a direct concept that he's talking to who? Only to the people around the mountain that he was talking to. When it says, Anachi Elekecha, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Elekehem Shel Yisrael, Hashem was saying, I am your God. I am Hashem, Yudke Vavke, the creator for everybody, but I am Elekecha, your God, of the Jewish people. Uvachar Bohem, and he chose them, us, Liyos Am HaNivchar. And v'nichlal b'zeh goyd l'ahav as hakadosh baruch hu l'amo yisrael ki chelak Hashem amoi and like it says ahavti yeschem amar Hashem Hashem loves us Hashem chose us ata bechar tonu mikol ha'amim ahavta oisanu v'iratzisa banu v'iraymam tonu mikol halshaynes and that's why when he introduced himself to the whole world he said anoichi Hashem and right away the third word was the third word elikecha. Your God. Let me give you an example. Imagine Rahman al Islam is a kid that needs surgery. He comes out of surgery, he doesn't remember anything. There's a man standing next to him and he says, I am the doctor, your father. He's telling him two things I am the doctor, I'm the one who did surgery, but I am your father. I happens to be, I want to let you know, I am your father. Anoichi Hashem Alekecha is two concepts. Anoichi Hashem, one concept. I created the world. That's Amuna. We believe that Hashem created the world. And then there's Anoichi Alekecha. Everybody thinks it's Anoichi Hashem Alekecha. Amuna. No. Anoichi Hashem and Anoichi Alekecha. Kishem, says the Nesiv Shalom. Kishem, she Yehudi Mechuiv Lahamin, Ba Anoichi Hashem. The same way that you Mechuiv to believe in the words Anoichi Hashem, that Hashem created the world. Kach Mechuiv Lahamin, Ba Anoichi Alekecha. So too you have to believe that you are a chelik alekami mal, and Hakadosh Baruch Hu loves you, 
even when there is no reason to love you. This is who you are. A father loves a child before there's a reason to love him. This little kid wakes him up in the middle of the night, screaming, crying. The father loves him. What did the kid do for you? Nothing. Crying, screaming. He has a dirty diaper. You love him anyway. No matter what he does, undeserved love. You would die for the kid. What did he do for you? Nothing, just crying, teething. Because that's in the Bria. A father loves their child, even when there's no reason to love him. And sometimes it's an older child, and the kid's not giving the father respect, and the kid's not behaving properly, and you can read, but he still loves him, because it's a chalik of the Bria. And we need to understand that Hashem chose to let us know this, He's letting us know that I created the whole world, but I have a separate relationship with you, Shefala. I have a separate relationship with you. You're my child. I chose you. I want you. I loved you. I love you. And you cannot break it. Your power is not stronger than my power, says Hashem. Now we can understand. Yeshlevar, Kushis Rishonim. The Rishonim say a fantastic question. Anachi Hashem Alikecha. I am God, your God. I took you out of Mitzrayim. So they ask, I don't understand. He's crea- he's, Hashem is, is speaking to us for the first time. He should have said, I am Hashem, your God, that's okay, who created the world. Why would you say, Hashem, Similar to that. Why would you talk about an event that happened a few days ago and forget about the whole creation of the world? You're introducing yourself to the whole world. So he says, no. He says, on Anoichi Hashem, on Yud Kevavke, it would have said, Anoichi Hashem, Asher Asisi, Asher Shemaim, Asher Aretz. V'anoichi Elikecha, Asher Tzitzichi, Asher Mitzrayim. It's really split. But on the first part, we didn't need an example. So Hashem just said, Anachi Hashem, I created the world, which means I created Shemayim Ba'aretz, Eloi Kecha, which is the second message, and I want to tell you, on Anachi Eloi Kecha, I am your God, Asher Ha'itzei Sichem Ha'aretz Mitzrayim. Asher Ha'itzei Sichem Ha'aretz Mitzrayim, Rak Beglal Shanachi Eloi Kecha, V'loi Mitzad Masechem Ha'toivim, Shari Ha'yisem Meshukayim B'mem Teshari Toma. The proof that Hashem loves us unconditionally, and that we don't need to do anything to deserve Hashem's love, which means that He'll use His power to save us, because that's what you do when you love somebody like crazy. The proof is that I took you out of Mitzrayim. Because in Mitzrayim, we were in Memtah Shari Tumah. We were in the lowest people. All we had was Leishinu Shamam, Abu Shalom We gave up Rasmila. We were out partying with the Egyptians. We were messed up. We were on the lowest of the low. And we were the Avedi Zara. There is no greater way to spit in Hashem's face. No matter what Avera you do, any Baltaiva Avera doesn't spit in Hashem's face. But going to serve an idol and saying, you created the world. You run the world. There's no greater spitting in Hashem's face than that. Says Hashem, I want to show you my commitment to you. I want to show you my love to you. I am that Alekecha. You are my children. I know where you've been. I know what you did. And I'm pledging my commitment to you. Because you need to know for the rest of eternity that there is nothing you can do that will make me stop loving you. And if I love you and my love is there 100%, then why shouldn't I use my power to help you? If your actions can lower my love, so of course I'm not going to take care of you. But if your actions cannot lower my love, and Hashem is pledging this to us, Hashem is saying, I don't have high expectations from you. I didn't say anoichi elikecha to the greatest of the seminary graduates of BJJ and Brisk. I said it to Oivdi Avedi Zara. And therefore you should know you can never blow it. And therefore, you could always rely on me. And therefore, I will always save you. Just like we saw in the first shlichus, 
when Hashem went ahead and he told Moshe Rabbeinu, go tell Paroi, do you know who you're messing with? Bini b'chayri Yisrael. We were on the Mem Teshari Tuma. Why didn't Hashem tell Moshe Rabbeinu, go to Klal Yisrael, tell him to do tshuva, and then we'll save them. Before we did tshuva, we were not just low in spiritual levels, we were low in the world. We were nobodies. Nesunim bevei savodim. We were slaves. We were in the ultimate shiftless berachni yisuva gashmias. And Hashem comes and He calls us what? Oh, my agma snefesh. My children who are messed up. No. He says, B'ni b'chayri Yisrael. Allah of Ava. Allah of Chiba. I love you. I'm crazy about you. Go to Pari and tell him, do you know who you're messing with? You're messing with my firstborn. You're messing with my beloved children. to teach us. He wanted us to know forever, for now. Not because of our good deeds are we his children. Elohim be'etzem b'ni b'chayri. That's essentially our essence of who we are. And therefore, it doesn't matter what your matzav is. Hashem could have rescued us when we were on the Chav Shari Tumah. But what would have happened? What would have happened if for the rest of eternity we would say, yeah, when I got a, I got a 60 on my test, my parents still loved me. But what if I get a 40? I have no proof. And the Siva Shalom says this point in Pesach where he explains it. Why did Hashem have to wait till Mamish Mem Teshari Tumah? Wake up earlier. B'chi had to be rushed. Wake up earlier. Teretz says Hashem wanted to wait to say these words until we were on the lowest of the low. Because if He would have said it when we were on Chav Shari Tumah, B'ni B'chayr Yisrael, then we would think forever, for eternity, for now, that okay, when we were on the Chav Shari Tumah, Hashem still somehow loved us, but not the Lamed Shari Tumah. Not the Mem Shari Tumah. Not when we're going clubbing Friday night and we're doing drugs and smoking weed on Shabbos. Can't be. That's what we would have thought mistakenly, says the Nesiv Shalom. That's why thousands of years ago in Mitzrayim, Hashem, in His mercy, waited to redeem us till we fell to the lowest level so He could say, go to Pari and say, do you know who you're messing with? Tell them, tell Para, you're messing with my B'ni B'chayri Yisrael. So that way we will know, get it into our bones, get it into our kishkis, that our actions have nothing to do with the love that Hashem has for us. L'hoidia, to let us know. Not because of our good deeds are we Hashem's children. Elohim be'etzem B'ni B'chayri. We are essentially the B'ni B'chayri, the beloved child of Hashem. It doesn't matter what you do. And this is like Rameyer that paskind, Ben Kachu Ben Kach, Nikrubanim. And the Sabbath Hadisha of Slanim said it's a mitzvah to repeat this. That we halacha Rameyer, we paskind like Rameyer, Ben Kachu Ben Kach, Nikrubanim. It's a mitzvah to say it. We should go around. Good morning. Remember, halacha Rameyer, halacha Rameyer. Mitzvah, it's a big mitzvah to ingrain this into us, us and to everyone around us. We need this message so much today because so many people are struggling and then instead of holding on, they let go because they're convinced that Hashem doesn't care about them anymore. How many kids struggle, teenagers, young adults, adults struggle and they say, after what I did, Hashem doesn't care about me anymore. It's false. We have to go around telling people, we mechazek them, you should know you're always going to be a son of Hashem, no matter what you do. Even when we sin. And that's why it says over here, to teach us that when he chose us, it was choosing us when we were in the mats of Amem Tashari and then you'll know always in every situation that you find yourself in.
If Hashem would have chosen us on a high level, we would think after we sink, we're not chosen anymore. But now that he chose us on the lowest level, I thought he said it by Pesach. He says it over here also. He specifically waited. So now what do you learn? That anybody or anything or any thought that tells you that you're unworthy of Hashem's ultimate love that he would give to the biggest tzaddik, even in previous generations, is just atas yetzar hara. It's false. Since choosing of us was on the lowest, and he said, I have the ultimate love for you, and it's unbreakable love, that means that he loves you the same as the Chavetz Chaim, the same as Tzadikim from Friya de Gadiris, the same as the Baal Shem Tov, the same as Rib Shimon Bayechai. Because he chose us on the bottom and he said, I'm giving you the top love to show that it can't be broken. If we would understand this, that our actions do not lessen at all the love that Hashem pledged to us, and that he has our best interest, and that he wants to be there for us, and he wants to help us, then we would never make the mistake to think that I have less of a chance to approach Hashem and to rely on Hashem than somebody better than me. That whole thing goes out the window. Even though it was Biyad HaKadosh Baruch Hu to be Matar them, in order to teach them, now he brings out a different point. Why didn't Hashem be metahar them and then take them out? In other words, okay, uh, I'm calling you, I love you. Now, before I do all the miracles, I'm going to be matari you, miraculously. I'm going to open up mikvis. I'm going to make it, I don't know, somehow from a, a, a ruach of tahara. And then we would have become tahara. And then he would have taken us out of Mitzrayim. But then, again, we would think, you know why we got salvation? You know why God did miracles? Because Lamaisa, we were tahar, even though he was mataras. But the bottom line is, Hashem cares about tahar people, not tame people. Not oiv de avay we did tshuva, we were saved. We don't do tshuva, we're not saved. So let's say the words again, they're so beautiful. Even though our Kaddish Baruch Hu could have been metar us from the Mem Teshari Tumah and take away our Zuama, our Tumah, even before Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, he didn't. He wanted to redeem us while we were in a state of extreme spiritual impurity. He wanted to redeem us. Chafetz HaKaddish Baruch Hu laharais liyusar ladairais to show Klal Yisrael for future generations, for us to know. I want you to know, I didn't take them out when they were good. They were on the bottom of the world. That's when I took them out. To teach us that even in such a matzav, if we are ever in down in the dumps, spiritual dirt and impurity, sewer, sewage, you should know. Like it didn't stop. The love doesn't stop for us. 